Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another video of Photoshop Elements and I'm your host Jack to take you along with another tutorial. First I'd like to tell you about uh, if you go over to jackstechcorner.com you still can uh, still available pick up a copy of the DVD. My DVD contains 45 high resolution videos for only $15. So it's a low fee it is very worthwhile to pick that up. Also, please check out on my website, again, jackstechcorner.com, check out my new sponsor. Um, his name is Ken, and he is the, the creator of Green Screen Wizard. It's a great program. Uh, my last video actually did a demo of it in Photoshop Elements to show you how it works. The uh, plugin that he created also works in Photoshop Elements uh, CS4 and CS3. And he has a standalone program. I did have somebody email me uh, yesterday uh, thanking me for the tutorial and said he was checking out the standalone program. You can download all of them. Uh, he has demos on his website so you can try them out for yourself. And, uh, you know, download it and follow along with my tutorial and see what you think. It's a great program, well worth the money. And uh, thanks to uh, Ken for sponsoring the shows. Now I wanted to get into a topic for this uh, particular uh, show. I was going over the forums, and if you've never been on our forums, I tell you what, there, there's a load of information starting to be generated. I wish more of you would come over and sign up. And I know you're saying, Jack, I have so many usernames and passwords now and signing up for this site and that site. And, and I do also, but you know what? It's the way to, to gather information, and I want people to sign up and post stuff in here. I see a lot of people do a lot of reading, but not a lot of posting. If you have questions, throw them in here, and I even see some uh, folks are helping other folks, and that's what I intended to do with the web forms. Again, if you go to jackstechcorner.com, on the left-hand side, you'll see our forums. Click on that, and it'll take you right to this page here. Now what I wanted to talk to in this episode, or talk about in this episode, was uh, the question came up, and let me scroll down here a little bit and we'll bring it up, from Lee Star 93 And I was looking at these and it says, I'm learning as I go and I'm having a, a problem. I need to be able to email my photos from Photoshop Element 6. Is this possible? It is possible, uh, Lee Star. It's very possible. I already commented back to you, so if you go in the forums, you'll see my answer. Or if you're watching this video, just follow along and you'll have it in a couple seconds here. You'll be good to go. There's a couple different ways, and we're going to look first at how to set it up. And I'm going to tell you how to actually um, authorize um, elements to send emails. I'll show you the nice way to do it that I like. And I'll give you a different idea of a different approach on how you can do it. So with that said, let me minimize this web browser and get it out of the way. We're going to use that here in a few minutes. Now these are just some uh, portraits I've been working on. And you've seen some of these in my last video when I was uh, introducing the green screen uh, wizard. But let's scroll down here and find something a little bit different that we can actually uh, email out. Yeah, let's take a look here. Let's use my old buddy the gnome. That's good enough. Now, before we go into sending an email, let me first go under uh, edit so you click on edit the pull down menu go down to preferences and then go right down to the bottom here where it says sharing so it's preferences and then sharing you come up with this tab now this should be oops why well, I never changed that okay now email client at the very top here you can click this pull down menu now you can use Microsoft Outlook Outlook Express or Adobe email services when you're using these two the only way I found that works is you're actually doing an attachment so when the user or when the, the recipient receives that email they have to click on something uh, to open that picture up and you know that's the only way I found that it works when you're using Adobe email services the way that works is the picture is embedded in the email so you can easily see the picture as soon as that email opens up 
And I watched a couple videos here recently of um, how to email pictures. And there was a, a little glitch in it. I mean, it was a good video. But um, because I don't want to take anything away from anybody's videos. But it was saying to, you, you would go in and do the resizing of the picture. And then you would take that picture, save it as a file, and then open your email client and attach it. And you could do that. That would work very well. But Adobe allows you to do it all from the organizer. So I say, why go out of the organizer? Let's go ahead and just create it and email it right out um, that way. Now, the email address. Set up your real email address. The reason is, this is going to send a verification to your email. Once you set this up, you'll click OK on it. And then you're going to go to your email and open up, and it's going to verify that this is your email address. The reason they do that is, I could put anybody's email address in there and send whatever kind of pictures to anyone, and they'll think it's coming from that person. So they want to make sure you verify it. Once you have your sharing set up, click OK. Now, you're verified and everything's ready to go. Let's go ahead and click on over here, Share. You see the tabs on the top. We've played with Create before and Fix for the quick edits. So click on Share. Now if you go down through here, you can send one picture or you can send multiple pictures. I sent one before, so this time I'm going to go ahead and attempt to send a couple. Yeah, it's scroll. It doesn't really matter. I want to send one portrait and one landscape shot. So I'll grab this one. Once we do that, if you click on this is the email attachments that can take it out and attach it to Outlook or Express or you can use photo mail so let's click on photo mail now there processed our two pictures and they're in there they're in photo mail and they're ready to be sent we can always have the option at this point to drag more in there if we wish this tells you here the estimated sizes it's 145.00 kilobytes Roughly to pull these messages up on the email, this is what this is telling you, is 50 seconds at 56k, so it's a dial up speed. Click next. Now who are we going to send it to? I'm going to send it to myself. Up here we can type a message. Yep, oh, yeah, once I type it up here, there we go. Okay, just something like that. Here are the pictures for you. Put an S in there and make it look nice. Okay. I picked my recipient again. That's who I'm sending it to. Now, save as a quick share flow. What that does is you can save this and it will actually save it in your organizer as basically like a workflow. So you can bring it back right back up again and maybe mail it to some other folks. I normally just leave that off. You can then go to next. Now, this is what's nice. This here, we can change the frames of our pictures. As you can see, this is how the pictures are going to be sent out. You can change the captions. Something like that. Um... something like that. Now, with that we also have other options over here. We have frames, all occasions. You can see we can change the frames around the pictures. You have uh, outdoors, such as if you want to put backgrounds. And there's another one. And you can see here are the pictures for you. So that's just changing the layout. There's even seasons. Maybe if you were doing some Christmas stuff, some Christmas pictures. So there's different backgrounds there. Animals. And those are just, you know, some different backgrounds. So you can play around with this stuff here. Uh, maybe we'll put a beach on it. There we go. Once you have that done, click on Next Step. The next step is you can actually change the photo size. As you can see, it made it bigger. You can go even larger. And there you go. This is your layout. 
how you want the pictures laid out. You can have columns and double columns. You can change the text. If you want to change your text here, you can actually change that. See how it changes. Show drop shadows or not. There we go. Let's go next. Now it's going to process that and set up as an email. Here's the email message. I'll try to pull this up a little bit. This is the actual email message that's going to be going out. You can see my subject line. It put this. It put basically a tag in there, um, just from Elements. So you just put um, there. You go. Then all you got to do at that point is address it. Just hit send. That point's going to process the photo, uh, the email, and it's going to send it on its way. Now with that gone, I'm going to pause this until I receive that email. Okay, so in the end here, what happened was, um, actually I emailed myself originally the gnomes, um, having a little difficulty actually uh, receiving that email uh, for some reason. Um, but this is a picture when I was previously uh, preparing this tutorial that I did email from the organizer. And you see it comes through very well. I uh, sent one of the pictures actually I green screened and I uh, put a frame around it so it looks very well. Puts a little tag on the bottom that tells everybody you sent it from uh, Adobe Elements so everybody knows where it comes from. So that is how the pictures actually come back. So once again I want to uh, thank everybody for subscribing to the shows and if you watch the videos and you don't subscribe please click on the little subscribe button that way when I produce a new video and you open up your YouTube uh, to have a look and you're logged in they'll appear uh, appear in a list uh, I know everybody I subscribe to and if they put a new video out I just click right on that list and I can watch the new video without digging into each person's website or doing searches for them also a lot of you out there have been asking me multiple times uh, Jack do you have a video of this Jack can you do a video of this and please um, on the right hand side when you're watching a video there's a little name up there. Mine says, I think mine says uh, Technoman42. If you click on that, that takes you into the person's channel, and that's where you can find all of the videos. So just go through all the uh, archive videos in there, the older videos I have done, and you can probably find your answer that way. So take a little time and search around. Then if you can't find it, by all means, email me. Or jump to the web forums, go to jackstechcorner.com, and click on our forms sign up for an account it's free I don't charge anything for it post your questions in there and you'll get answers back either from uh, other people or myself so thanks for watching the video keep those shutters clicking keep the editors editing and I'll see you back here very soon bye for now